without any further ado, here's Andrew. Great, thank you, Rick. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Andrew Knazel. I'm head of sales for Doorbird US. Uh, so I sit in our San Francisco office uh, along with our tech support team over here uh, and we handle the, the US region. Uh, so yeah, I figured the, the agenda for today will give kind of, um, we'll start with a high level overview of the Doorbird, uh, move into speaking about some of the features that set us apart from uh, some other similar products in the market, uh, and then take a more detailed view of kind of like the physical features and specs of the Doorbird product line. Make sure everyone's kind of caught up with that. So Doorbird, as you know, uh, is a cloud-based IP video door station. So the, uh, the obvious functionality, uh, somebody rings the doorbell, push notification to a smart device, and then swiping open the push to open the app on your phone, giving you the live video, uh, the two-way audio, and access to some of the other features of the Doorbird. So I guess first question, what sets it apart from other products uh, on the market? So it's the abilities that go beyond the smartphone. So the Doorbird can act as a standalone access control device or uh, can be integrated into a larger access control system. Uh, something I believe is of particular interest is the SIP capability of the units. Uh, so we've done some pretty extensive uh, internal testing of the units. We um, have tested with a Yalink yeah Grandstream. Uh, the we offer some instructions for the SIP integration on our website for, for some of the things we've tested in-house. Uh, and we also work pretty thoroughly with partners who, who are implementing this into, let's say, a commercial application using an IP phone system. Uh, we've had a lot of partners use it with Panasonic, um, tackling everything from as simple as having just a few IP phones they need ringing, like maybe the receptionist desk, to uh, larger estates that have um, even analog phones still uh, in the estate and they need to go from IP from the doorbird to analog in the estate to ring the phones throughout the house. So uh, it is pretty thoroughly tested and you know we've we've seen a lot of success um, with the the SIP enabled devices. And what might be the thing that really sets us apart, the thing that kind of really made a big splash for us was the the home automation drivers. Uh, so some of these we went third party with, like the Control 4 and, and the Crestron, uh, and some we worked directly with the partners and they've developed the drivers in-house, uh, the RTI, uh, the URC, the Elan. Um, so they vary in the depth of the, the integration. For example, Savant developed a profile in-house. I believe that is pretty straightforward. It's just the video and the audio, uh, let's say on an in-wall iPad. Uh, Control 4 is probably the most robust integration we have available. We worked with um, a company's integration to develop that driver, and it, it's, um, it functions in, in the Control 4 app. Um, it is available up to like four touch screens, you know, for live video, and really all the features of the Doorbird are available um, via the, the Control 4 environment. Now, URC, uh, for example, their total control system is uh, running the Doorbird app kind of siloed into their into their um, home automation platform. So with all those feature sets uh, available in the Doorbird, really there's not a market that we can't sell into. So uh, whatever application you have going, the Doorbird really is going to offer something that's going to be uh, viable in that application, uh, whether it be like office space, you know, uh, educational facilities, and then obviously residents, uh, and then multi, multi-tenant situations, MDUs, we have models uh, that will go up to like 100 tenants. So now let's take a look at the, the product line. And if there was any part of that where you'd like me to elaborate a little bit, we can always come back to it in, in the Q&A section of the webinar. Uh, but now we'll take a, a look at, you know, in depth more kind of the features that come uh, with the Doorbird. So just starting at the top across all Doorbirds, IP65 rated. So uh, in the inclement weather, not gonna be a problem. Uh, temperature tested, uh, heat, cold. So we have these things sitting in Minnesota to Las Vegas, and we have not found an environment yet that's really going to be uh, difficult for the Doorbird. Everything you need to get it going is going to be included in the box, uh, the transformer, adapters for different uh, power outlets uh, across the world, um, security screwdriver, and then some sample credentials for, uh, for the IF RFID reader that's built into some of the models. Uh, with each model, you're also going to get, we refer to this as a digital passport. So it is the credentials to add the Doorbird to the app. So as you can see, there's a QR code there included on the document. It's really as simple as that. So once you go into the app, hit add, it's gonna ask you to scan this QR code and it takes about a second to add the Doorbird to the app and get it up and running. 
So this is the D101 model. So these models are smaller footprint, plastic body. These are Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, just running through kind of the, the, the specs here on the doorbird. Uh, the camera is 720p. It is 180 degree lens. So that's very wide, almost fisheye. So really any angle you're at with the doorbird, you're gonna be able to get the visitor in the picture. Uh, the doorbirds are night vision enabled. So 12 high powered LEDs uh, around the lens there. And IR cut filters, so low light conditions, those will go ahead and click on when somebody rings the doorbell or there's motion detected. Uh, speaking of motion, in the center there, the little black bulb, that is the motion detector, which is configurable. So I'm sure everybody's seen this image before. So like any kind of standard IP camera, uh, if there is something you don't want to be triggering the motion, like a tree branch in the corner, you go ahead and gray out, gray out that grid and it's uh, gonna stop the motion from picking that up. Andrew, it's Rick. Yes. Um, can you hit the, the orange arrow to hide your panel? I didn't realize you had your panel open because I had mine open and it was covering yours. Oh, right there? Perfect. Oh, yep. I, I apologize. I didn't realize I was showing on the screen. Uh, no worries. Okay, thank you. Yep. And then, of course, the, uh, we have the illuminated call button here at the bottom. So just a quick look at the terminal on the back of the doorbird. And this is where we're going to start to see some of the additional features that make the doorbird stand out. It kind of speaks back to some of the earlier slides, like the access control ability of the doorbird. So here is where we're gonna find uh, the terminal for the RJ45 dongle. So um, power-wise, the doorbird will do PoE or it can be powered with the included transformer. Obviously a hardwired connection is gonna be best. So if you can get a CAT cable to location, uh, there's your power PoE and your hardwired network connection. But this unit is Wi-Fi enabled, so if you wanted to, you can go Wi-Fi and then use the transformer to power. The terminal next to that one is a normally open relay that is triggered via the app. So we have a lot of guys wire up door strikes, use it for gate control, et cetera. And this can be connected to anything that can be triggered via just like a contact closure. And again, that terminal is triggered via the app, just the button in the, uh, the main view of the app. This terminal here is where you could wire in a, uh, let's say a wired door chime. So it's an, also a normally open relay, but this one is triggered via the button push. So if somebody were to ring the button, you could have this, this uh, chime, let's say wired into the foyer. So uh, if they don't have their smartphone, they'll still know somebody's at the door. All the doorbirds uh, can take and integrate like a third party access control device. So if it is an office and they do want, let's say a request to exit button, with this terminal, you can wire in that device. And the last terminal there is where you would connect to the uh, included transformer if you choose to power it that way. So that was the D101 models. These are the D21 models. So uh, as you can see, uh, a little bit larger um, metal faceplate, and it has some features that are kind of upgraded from the D101 models. So the specs on the camera are gonna remain the same, 720p, 180 degree lens uh, with the IRs around the camera. Uh, where we start to really see the difference here is the motion sensor. And it, this model does have a built-in RFID reader. So a more kind of fleshed out access control solution. So those RFID readers, uh, they take a 64-bit 125 kilohertz credential, which we do sell, but they will take any credential meeting that spec. So if you happen to have a box of key fobs on your desk that are 64-bit and 125 kilohertz, those will work just fine. Uh, the motion detector, also improved. So whereas the other motion, you could configure it with that grid. This motion, uh, you're able to configure for directionality of the motion and distance. So if you want the motion detector to only fire if someone's approaching the doorbird and gets within, let's say, one meter, you can configure that uh, within the app and, and uh, have it uh, kind of filter events that way also. So a little more control. These models also available in a variety of finishes. So if you got a guy and he decides, yeah, the color needs to match my Ferrari, uh, we can help with that and, and make that happen. The 21 series uh, also incorporates the multi-tenant station. So here we have a three button. This is also available in a two button. And aside from the number of individual call buttons, the, the specs are gonna remain the same. So we're gonna have that same camera uh, the same 720p, 180 degrees, and also with the RFID reader and motion sensor. This is the D21 DKH. So this is the uh, integrated keypad multi-tenant model. So this will uh, handle up to 100 tenants. 
up to 100 credentials. So whether it be key fob or pin pad, I'm sorry, rather pin code for access. And as you can see, it has the uh, directory display LED screen for um, tenant listing, and then the buttons to search and call from that directory display. And then the, uh, the same features uh, with the RFID reader and the motion sensor. This is the D2101KV. So this has the integrated keypad, but it is for single occupants. So uh, residential application or commercial application, um, the keypad can be used to uh, assign pin codes for access control. The pin pad will also send HTTP requests. So if you wanted to integrate it with, let's say, a control four system and set in a code like 1111 pound, and that told the control four system to, let's say, like, you know, turn off all the lights in the house, um, you can do that with this model also. Um, so it's, and then also, you know, SIP enabled, uh, same feature set there. So we have a lot of guys use this for commercial applications. Uh, gate control is a common one. Um, and uh, yeah, this is actually a newer model. This was released uh, just a few months ago. So on the back of the unit, uh, also a terminal block. Uh, this one actually uh, also upgraded from the D101. So Instead of the dongle, you're going to have just an RJ45 jack to plug in your hardware connection. The 21 series models are not Wi-Fi enabled. They do not support Wi-Fi. Uh, reason being is typically Wi-Fi does not want to go through the, the front of a house or a building and then through the metal can that is on the back of this unit. So we remove the Wi-Fi. Uh, but again, one CAT cable will do it. There's your PoE and there's your hardware network connection. On these units, there are two bi-stable latching relays. So you can go normally open or normally closed, and there's an option to uh, set them to latch. So you, you know, trigger it once from the app, it'll, it'll close, trigger it again, it'll open or vice versa since they are bi-stable. And yes, yeah, so these relays are fired from, or it's triggered from the app. So something to point out on the single um, occupant, let's call it single occupant model, like the D101, you can wire in an, uh, an external chime. On the multi-tenant models, you are not, a, that relay is um, uh, not used, it is disabled. So that is something to keep in mind. This one also has the ability to bring in a third party, party access control device, same as the D101. And the last terminal there is for the, uh, the included transformer. So without going too deep into the app, because uh, that is uh, there's a lot of detail that could be covered in there, I just listed out some of the um, kind of uh, FAQs that usually uh, come with the app. Uh, so the video, it can be accessed at any time. Uh, it does not need to be triggered from the Dorbert station. So a, Dorber, a doorbell push isn't required to view the live video. Um, as mentioned, you can activate the uh, built-in relays from the app. Uh, cloud recording, still images come free. Uh, with, with all the units, and then the video recording can be activated for $48 a month. Uh, one of the other cooler features we've built into the app is geofencing. So from the app, you can uh, set one of the relays to automatically trigger if uh, the smart device with the Dorbert app on it gets within a certain distance of the Dorbert station. So uh, I, uh, access control is a, is a common use for this. So if the, you can set it so if the smart device running the app gets within 100 meters of the Dorbert station, uh, the relay will uh, close and, and activate the gate, the gate controller, allowing access. Uh, we've seen the motion section, yes, section configuration already. Uh, scheduling and permissions, this is a pretty cool feature. So. Uh, with all the relays, uh, with all the credentials, you are able to set schedules. So if you do have, let's say, the uh, the gardener has a key fob, but you only want that key fob to operate between noon and 5 p.m., you can set that within the app. So um, they're not able to access before or after those times. Um, same thing with the permissions. You can uh, grant if you, so there's two relays on the back of the D2101, for example. If you want only um, mom and dad have access to both relays and the kids should only have access to the one relay uh, that controls the front door, for example, you can set that within the app. So uh, giving access to some, uh, some features, but not others. Uh, and user creation, uh, within the app, you're able to create users and email those user credentials to people. So um, I'll common, a common uh, implementation of that is 
uh, Air Airbnb guests. So if you do have um, a residence and they're allowing Air Airbnb rental, uh, you are able to create a user, send it to the guest. Uh, that will give them the ability to download that Doorbird onto their app, get the full features. And then when their stay is up, you can delete that user so they no longer have access to the Doorbird. We also have a line of uh, peripherals, like accessories that are available. Uh, so I'll go over these also in a little bit of detail because some of these are pretty handy. Uh, so this is uh, a networkable IO box. Uh, we call it like a door controller. Uh, so what this will do is um, once it's on the network, it is discoverable within the Doorbird app uh, and it has three bi-stable latching relays built in. So if you do have a larger project that requires more relays, uh, put this on the network, the Doorbird app will discover it, you pair it with the Doorbird, and now these relays will be available within the Doorbird app. Um, they'll, they'll be uh, in the menu, the app menu with all with the relays that are built into the Doorbird. Uh, this will operate off of Wi-Fi or a hardwired connection, and likewise can be powered via PoE or the included transformer. So these could actually be uh, in theory, uh, be stacked up as many uh, as you need on top of each other to, to deliver, um, you know, relays to, to, the, uh, to the project. This is our IP chime. So obviously not everybody has their smart device with them all the time. And they, some people would like to have these chimes landed throughout the residence uh, or the office so they can get an audio alert when somebody's at the door. Uh, these also will connect Wi-Fi or hardwired, uh, and they do not power off of a battery, so that is something to keep in mind. They will not be 100% wireless, so they will need to receive power either from PoE or from the included transformer. And these here, of, of these two, the, uh, the gigabit PoE injector is just a pretty standard PoE injector, so I'm sure everyone has seen these before. Um, the two-wire Ethernet PoE converter, these are actually pretty cool. So what it will do is deliver data and uh, PoE over just two conductors. So think of it kind of like a video bail-in, but for data and power. So in a retrofit situation, if they have an existing doorbell uh, and it's just the two conductors sitting there and the, uh, the, the customer does not want to pull a new wire through the wall, uh, you can place one of these at both ends of those two conductors and maybe a, you know land a PoE switch um, wherever that uh, two conductors is coming out in the house, and you can still provide a, a doorbird solution even though they don't want to run new cable. So um, it's a, I, I once asked the guys in Germany how these worked, and they told me it was magic. So I, I didn't look any farther than that. But uh, yeah, a lot of guys are very excited about these. Okay, that is uh, kind of the end of our run through. So again, any. I realized I covered kind of a lot of ground pretty quickly. Um, so if there are any additional questions, um, you'd like me to elaborate on something, I'm happy to do it. I believe we're uh, taking questions in the uh, little question box. Okay, so I've got some questions here. Great. So um, one, of the, one of the questions that comes through is asking about wedges for uh, uh, doorway openings that may have side lights or something like that where the uh, the location of the of the bell is quite a ways away from where the person might be standing so wedges as in something to kind of like angle the doorbird when it's installed yeah for the surface mount units so this is a this is an item this is an accessory item that we actually sell fairly commonly with one of the uh, competing units that we we also offer so it's yeah. just a little like a five degree wedge that has the same shape and the same color so that uh, it can, you know, kind of just tilt toward the, um, right. toward where the person might naturally be standing if it's, uh, if it happens to be off center. I mean, it's with the, you're within range because obviously the person has to be able to reach it to hit the button. Right. But, right. and you have a little bit of a wild, wider field of view than some of the other products in the market. But right. uh, that the is wedge is the solution for that. Yeah, unfortunately, we we don't have uh, we don't produce one of these wedges. Uh, like um, okay, we'd have to go third party. But typically, yeah, with that 180 degrees, we we have yet to find an installation where the person standing outside that field of vision. Okay. All right. So, um, 
in this the next question, I don't know if you want to address this or not, but it's about um, potential future products or future revisions. Sure. Um, you're asking about uh, higher resolution camera options. Yeah, yeah, I, I can speak to that. Um, okay. We do have a revision plan for uh, the D101 models. Um, no, no concrete ETA yet, but you know, um, kind of. We we are hoping to see it by like you know. Please, I know and quote me on this, but I'm thinking Q1 of next year. Uh, and with that revision, revision will come a 1080p camera and uh, other hardware updates that will uh, enable some other integrations. Okay. And all right, the mm. all right. So we've got a couple questions about the uh, the two wire, the PoE converter. Yes. But that that unit is prob that has created more buzz. I, I mean, we uh, the sales are are okay but if yeah. we uh <laughs> if we got credit for the questions <laughs> that unit would be uh one of our number one by far <laughs> so the two wire poe converter yeah. uh, jose's got a question about um which units it will fit inside ah uh, so, yes yeah. that, that that is kind of the catch of that item it's very cool but it is it is you know just um the size of a typical balance so it is like a black metal rectangle the the D21 models, I believe you could. I believe you could get the the um, the receiver end into the surface box of the D21 um, models. Uh, the D101 models, there is just nowhere to put it. So realistically, that is either you're not going to want to put a back box on the back of that D101. It would be a good like three inches off the wall. It would look not so good. Um, so it would need to hide somewhere in the wall for the D101. Uh, the D21, the D21 models, you're getting a, a good bit more play. So, I believe in in the back of the surface pan, you probably could fit, you probably could fit the the receiving end in in the recess box or the surface mount box. I think it's it, that's more realistic. But the D101, yeah. there's literally nowhere to put it in, inside the unit. We heard that straight from the field from one of our dealers that bought it. So he actually came back and upgraded because he bought the smaller yeah. the surface mount unit, yeah. and then. He's like, I don't know what to do with this. We're like, oh, uh, it has to go, you know, behind the, the casing. He's yeah. like, I don't really have access to that without doing millwork and right. reconstruction. So he, we allowed him to return the other unit for no sure. restock, and we we gave him the bigger, uh, the bigger unit, the 2100 series. Mm -hmm. And he said it. He reported back that it fit, and his customer was happy. And he liked it right. anyway because it's a real, real metal versus the uh, metallic. Uh, just the paint you know, the, and the yeah, yeah the plastic fin. Okay, so so Michael has a follow-up question about the two wire. He said yes. it requires a ballot at each end, correct? Correct. It's a transmitter yes. receiver, transmitter and receiver, right? Okay. All right. Um. So Nick asked a question: What's the maximum distance after the ballon? After the transmitter ballon? Yes. Uh, I believe it's about 280. Okay. Right, which kind of it just falls in line, kind of with the uh, with data transmission and POE transmission, which is typically, if I'm not mistaken, about 280 feet. Okay, and then he's asking after the receiver balance, how much distance we have after after the receiver converts it. Oh, I'm sorry, I was I was referring to after the receiver. Yeah, after after the transmitter, I am not I, I would play it safe and, and keep that transmitter pretty close to the to the door group. Okay. Yeah. All right, but I mean, if we needed to. Um... Let's say fish it down a wall and put a box, like you know, next to the casing. That'd be fine. Yeah, six, eight, ten feet. Talking like fifty feet after the transmitter, you'd, you'd be fine. Oh, okay. All but right. I, I would, yeah. But definitely, I wouldn't try to go two eighty from the receiver and then another like, <laughs> two eighty from the transmitter. It's, it's, okay. yeah, you're not, not gonna work out. Okay. That'd be my, uh, yeah. All right, and then um, I've got some integration questions. I know these are probably best for the vendors but um ezekiel is asking about the product integration with rti yes what's your experience with the uh, integration with rti uh so the rti the integration with rti has has been good um right now it is in revision so right now the d101 models um working great uh and it is currently being updated for the d21 model um, okay. the, yeah, and the integration from RTI is, it has been good, has been strong. All the major features are there uh, that you would want, the audio, the video, uh, some trigger controls. 
Okay. And Ezekiel, since we're also an RTI distributor and we've got a great relationship with them, if you want, we can take this offline and I can introduce you to uh, some of the folks over at the team at RTI that might be working on this. If you've got specific features that you'd like to uh, um, to see implemented or improved upon, you know, we can sure. create that. We can start that dialogue with uh, with with both of these partners. Yeah, yeah, we can take a look um, at it. The, the guys at RTI have been good. The guy, RTI has been very responsive and, and they've been uh, uh, very uh, enthusiastic about the integration. So it, it's likely, you know, I, yeah, I, I would love to connect and see if you know, probably the guys you're talking to are the same uh, people we've been working with. Uh, with RTI. Okay. All right. Um, let me see. So this also comes from Ezekiel. He, mm -hmm. are you in a position to um, make kind of a direct comparison to some of the other competing products that are more uh, uh, consumer related? Uh, sure, sure. We, we're speaking specifically about like like Ring and your Nest Hellos. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. I, you know what? I, I'm <laughs> I'm a diplomatic guy. I do like to say up front, like they're good. I have nothing against, <laughs> I'm nothing against, they're, they're a good product for what they do. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're strong products and kind of like, as mentioned up top, the, the difference is what happens beyond the, what happens beyond your iPhone for, for ring, for example, um, it goes to your iPhone and it does that very well. The picture's great, but that's where it's stopping. To my knowledge ring, um, as we all know, has been uh, acquired, uh, but still to this, um, at, if I'm not mistaken, at this point, still really doesn't integrate with anything. So like a closed system, I believe it integrates with um, was it Am Amazon Show uh, that screen? And then I, I heard somewhere that it, it will there is a way to get it to integrate with like a Samsung refrigerator that has a screen. Um, but it, there are no relays built into the back um, from a price point perspective to even start to get some of the features that are available on even the most like, uh, let's say, um, lower price point doorbirds. You're stepping up uh, beyond their basic model, which brings you into I think the $200 range, like I think for POE, right? So, for what you're getting from the doorbird, depending on you know, obviously it's all uh, a lot of it's going to be customer driven and user driven. What 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 are they wanting from the thing that you're going to put at their front door? If all they want is something 